Yes, Mr. Niffin, you were discussing the idea of a super tire earlier. I know that in some of your older models and some of your newest, you still have the idea of a hydraulic empire. I wonder how that's something you think might evolve in the next 50 years. Uh, the, the, the notion of the hydraulic empire uh, came right out of history books by a, by a guy whose name I never actually memorized. But the notion is the hydraulic empires are unkillable, at least from inside. They never disintegrate. They never fall apart. If your government controls your water source, you will obey your government or die, and die anyway at, at your government's whim. There's no way out, and it's going to be that way for n generations until barbarians swarm in. Now, if we have a world government, there ain't no barbarians. It doesn't have to be Valdemar the 11th. It can be Valdemar the 110th. Unless we invent our own aliens through uplifting creatures, through creating simulated beings, through changing our own descendants. Mm -hmm. And that has been done. Yeah. Lady at the far back there. Louder. Speak up. I'm sorry. Two things. One, don't you think of the fact that we question the authority of all of the people who come before us, or at least question what they say, and go out to the scientific mind and how the science works, that you have to be able to prove, you have to be able to prove what someone tells you. They have to show you how it works, or you're not going to believe it. That's not the reason at all. You're talking to me this way. Eject her. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not the reason at all. why I'm in square that there were other people who questioned authority, and they died for it, and that is, most, that is far more common than what we've been doing these last few decades. Well, and the reason our country has that, the reason our country has a questioning of authority is because it was founded on a questioning of authority. You can't have a, a revolution where you say, oh, so is France. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I don't think it was really the same thing. I, uh, when you have a, a country that's founded on the premise that uh, anybody who is set above you is probably a, a blockhead. Jesus, you, so was the Soviet Union. <laughs> sure, they were founded on a question of, of authority that was no, done with were, They were founded on a question of starvation. Yeah, they were quite, a little bit different. They were founded on a uh, on a uh, idea of replacing one authority with another authority. Those who prescribe weak government as the way to prevent weak governments from ever being a threat. Uh, for two years now, <laughs> yes. I have been I have been uh, asking uh, people who say this, and I consider myself to be a libertarian, so I consider this to be a loathsomely uh, dumb aspect of libertarian cant. Those who prescribe weak government as the way to keep us safe from that one of those five power centers, government, have never been able to show me a single example. However, I can show you several counterexamples. 1917 Russia, 1926 Italy, 1933 Weimar Germany, 1935 Spain, 1948 China. All of them weak governments unable to serve as tools for law and civil society uh, for their people. And then uh, they were taken over by criminal gangs that conspired in the shadows nearby and instantly turned the state apparatus from, from uh, inefficiency to, to the worst tyrannies the world has ever seen. The way, the way we have prevented government from being bad is the way we have done it. A strong government kept in check by an even stronger people. That appears to work. Oh, bravo. But top priority is keeping the government in check, a choke chain, an electronic choke chain. <clears throat> and that's why, despite the fact that I think that it's terribly silly, I'm just clapping away at this whole farce that's going on out there. Gentleman with a beard. Um, part of the problem I see is, is you guys talk about the elite and the people that don't keep up. Um, part of what I'm interested in is the education system. And I don't know if our standard primary <coughs> secondary education system can keep up with uh, moving people ahead and keeping up with the technology you guys talked to. Um, I, I agree entirely. I, keep, you guys I teach class. And um, it's, it's terribly scary what people don't know that come into my classrooms. Well, are, are you a teacher of, of young, uh, young no, people? No, I, I teach community college. Oh, okay. Because and, in um, a lot of elementary schools, teachers are afraid of computers. Yeah, and um, they made the in my community college. They a lot of people are taking computer classes on a very basic level, but they know very little else. Um, it's all very well and good to know how to use a computer, but if you don't know what to look for, or you don't know what information you want, um, or that you even want the information, what are you going to do? 
Um, it's not a substitute for thinking yeah. still. If Computer's think not a substitute it, for thinking. The most popular things, and, and now I get to plug my book, yeah. uh, the most popular things on computers, and that's what I discovered and, and wrote about this, it's pornography. You know, people get on the, I've got a computer, what can I do with it? I know, I'm going to go to triple X, you know, you know, come see, come see me give birth or whatever um, <laughs> on the computer. And, and if they don't do right. that, they go and play games. You know, they go play computer games. And if you're playing, playing computer games or, or, or looking into pornography, you're not getting the information that'll help you, you know, think and make decisions and change the world and yeah. do all that good stuff. I think I like, I heard it said uh, that uh, when, when the president and other, other uh, high place figures in the public and private sector have said we need to get a, you know, an internet port into every classroom, someone pointed out that this is like handing a 10 year old a remote with 100,000 channels and saying, have fun. You know? <laughs> Now, you can stumble across good information, but there, you can also stumble across a lot of noise uh, or and other things. Yeah, there's kind of a static effect in the, in the Internet and in the information at large is that the, we, we have so much information that it's impossible almost to connect with the information that you need. Yeah. In fact, I went to a conference just uh, at, at uh, Annenberg's, uh, sponsored by the Annenberg School at USC last October. We, in fact, many librarians, archivists, and people who work with uh, uh, the Organization of Information at one for, uh, and this was aimed at people who are uh, in, the, in the age of cybernetics and the age of the internet and so on. And that's the big issue. How do we organize information? with this new technology so that people are actually getting what they need. And this is going to be another challenge for the next so the 15 years. So the the next ruling elite. They, yeah. 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 The, the, other thing, the other thing I realized, um, when I was, again, when I was writing this book and I was studying up in computers, I'd just recently gotten on the net when I started writing this. Um, I'm, I'm still very new to it. And um, I thought to myself, I said, oh boy, you know, the global village, at long last I can talk to people in China and France and we can get together and I can learn what they think and what they think and I can get all sorts of ideas from different people. And right away I ended up going and hanging out with people who were just like me. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to hang out with people, no matter where they are, who are just like you and ignore everyone else in the world um, on, on something like a computer. And that means that you don't go out and meet other people who disagree with you. You just hang out with people who reinforce your beliefs and your, your position. Um, and you, you know, you may never see them or you may hear from them from France or wherever they are, but they're, they're reinforcing your, your, uh, your position and it's very scary in a way. Um, are, are, are you resting your hand on your head or you got a question? Yeah. There was a uh, recent article in Wired Magazine where they sent one of the reporters to Africa to check on the state of internet connectivity there. And they found out that, well, they expected they would see nothing except in some of the major cities. What they found out was that there was a lot more connectivity than they thought. Uh, most of the uh, internet uh, services were run by women because they already knew how to network and talk with each other. They just did it over longer distances. And they all complained about the crappy phone system. So uh, <laughs> they, I think Africa is going to get it as much as you Let me know where, okay. well, I mean, you know where one of the I biggest markets you know. for uh, cell phones is, is in Africa to little villages because their, their, t their regular landlines are so screwed up mm -hmm. that they send people in and sell cell phones to the villages. And they may just skip a lot, you know, why not? They may just skip a couple of uh, levels of technology. Why do they need copper wire, you know? We're not gonna put in copper wire and then put in fiber optics and then get them to, you know, wireless. I was just gonna say, a footnote to what you were saying is that I was uh, actually traveling in Europe last month and uh, one of the places I stopped was, uh, just passing through was Oxford and I happened to, not too much detail, being a Jamaican restaurant uh, at Oxford and an, uh, uh, an American professor who was actually on an exchange program in Oxford sat across from me. Well, you know, we found out, same, same profession. Uh, uh, we started sharing information and I asked him, what is, uh, what's internet connectivity like at Oxford? You know, 15th century university, you know, 15th century. He said, they have to completely rewire the buildings if we want. <laughs> to log on. It's very frustrating. It's not just Africa. Oxford, the oldest university <coughs> in the English uh, in the English speaking world, can't get on the internet. Not in any you know, not in any reliable way. Well the the 
Um, the newspapers that are the slowest to get new technology are the newspapers that are the largest newspapers. The mm -hmm. Los Angeles Times, for instance, is the is way behind all of the smaller newspapers in computer uh, uh, in pagination and and all sorts of uses for the computer. Could we have um, just just quick um, things that you predict for the next fifty years? You people out in the audience, and you, Larry, you've never finished your yeah. list. Uh, the Oregon Lakeing Law in Florida was the first. The second is some <coughs> terrorists will take out a city in the next 10 years. And give me 50, I'll give you two cities. <laughs> What's happened is that, uh, is that atomic bombs, as controlled by the Soviet Union, no longer are. Little clumps of Soviet Union are, are in possession of bombs that can be used for probably failed uh, attempts to, to gain any kind of power, or sold to terrorists who are already in place for large money, and they're all starving, so they need the money. Uh, third prediction is a little more elaborate. In the next 50 years, you'll see a bio disaster of major proportions deriving from genetic engineering. You will realize that it could have been contained if it had been done on the moon, if there were a moon base <laughs> recorded. We should have had moon base by now. Everybody's gonna freak every survivor is going to freak once this uh, disaster has been contained and then they'll go for a real space program. But, but uh, the one thing you should always look at all of these scenarios is, uh, I, I've got a lot of radio interviews when the cloning thing came along because of my novel glory season, is if you take a look at the scenarios that So did I, for no good reason at all. <laughs> well, because you're Larry Nevin. The, um, if you take a look at almost all the dark side scenarios that can happen in the next 50 years, now remove secrecy and you find yourself in a scenario in which things look as if they are more likely to be kept somewhat under control. Secrecy, it may not be the root of all evil, just like money is not, but you name me an evil that is not mediated, exaggerated, and amplified by secrecy. And that, I believe, is gonna be one of our principal things. I predict what I predicted in, in Earth. There will eventually be a Helvation War, the entire world against Switzerland. <laughs> It'll take us six or seven years, the Alps will be melted down to slag, but we'll finally get the bank records. <laughs> um, this time we actually are uh, pretty close to the end, so does anybody up here want to make any final comments? Uh, do you know that uh, there is, a, I actually, it's very funny, I kind of predicted this, and it wasn't 50 years, and, and I, um, the minute they, they mentioned cloning, I said, the cat clone the cat. I love my cat. We can clone my cat. Mm -hmm. And um, I just saw, like, yesterday for, like, they want something like $100,000 now. But they'll clone your pet. Um, and uh, I, I predict that within the next five or ten years, for $1,000, you will be able to clone okay. your pet. So your pets will, will remain with you. And um, and despite, despite attempts, I think, to keep cloning under wraps by the United States, and, and it's it's absolutely no. ridiculous. This is you know they'll, they'll go across to Mexico, they'll go to Tijuana, they'll get yourself cloned. Um, <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. To me, that's that's Bill Clinton's real crime is not what he did in the bedroom, but for this idiotic stance he took about cloning, yeah. and uh, just to pander to the to the Bible Belt or whatever group he was trying to uh, pander to. Uh, the first thought I had when I heard about cloning was, all right, I can clone myself. Mm. I like me. <laughs> <laughs> the corn king can have anything he wants as long as the crops don't fail. We're starting to, s we, somebody should tell him what happens if there's a stock market problem. Uh, I very much like this whole corn king. <laughs> I think it's one of the choicest things I've heard this, this afternoon. I'm not sure I s swallow it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Personally, I think the American people's sense of proportion. Uh, <laughs> and we get your thrust, David. We get your thrust. Is the biggest reason for this. And we'll all see in November whether or not people want the nation to be so transfixed on. Um, transfixed? Impaled by. <laughs> <laughs> Peck, peck your <laughs> <laughs> With that penetrating remark, we should probably quit. Right? Yeah, can, you, can, you, can we put this subject to bed now? Yeah. <laughs> on that note. Yeah, on that note, I think uh, unless somebody truly objects, I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs>